Anyway. Okay. So you want us as close to the mic? Yeah, right, exactly. If yeah. possible. And then, you know, I, can, I do a little light editing. And of course, I have to, I never make a mistake. So, you know, <laughs> on my podcast. My show. It's a, so it's called a podcast. Anyway, that it's basically what it means is people can listen to it on all these devices that they spend all their time listening yeah, to yeah. and we're looking at. Wow. So I can, even though I'm uh, kind of a Luddite on some level, I'm also contributing to the problem. But uh, admittedly, but I have to. A lot of people now, uh, instead of listening to the radio, they listen to podcasts. Yeah. And pod from like, you know, iPod. How do you spell that? P O D. Podcast. Exactly. Yeah. And the reason wha wha what the people really like is because you can just choose when and what. You don't have to worry that, oh, this show is on at a certain time of the yeah, day. You and you have to. you just play it and you can. You can play yeah. whenever you want. You just push a button on your it's phone. It's like Orange is the New Black. You can watch the whole goddamn thing in yeah. two nights, on, which I plan on doing. <laughs> 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 it is. Um, they figured out that um, the formula, those TV shows, that, like Orange is the New Black, for instance, it's a good example. They've, they, they understand exactly what they're doing. They know how to shape and f the arc of these stories, and they keep people to make them binge watch it. I mean, it's... And you can watch them the, the whole season in one week. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I yeah. You, you might have bed sores, but you'll... <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm watched the whole first season in two nights. <laughs> Really? <laughs> keep yeah. going. I'm going to get all the actors on if you keep <laughs> plugging the show for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, good, good. <laughs> and maybe you'll get on there. Too. You know, you'll have no, to. No, I'd love to do it. Are you, you kidding? What kind of crime would you have to commit, your any character? Any crime. I'm, I'm up for anything, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I'm sitting with, uh, my name is Adam again, just in case. You're yes. Uh, I'm sitting with, uh, I'm going to do this. You just correct me if, I'm, if, I, if I butcher this, but let don't me. Don't read that. Don't even do that. Okay, don't do it. I was, so, I was looking forward to doing it, but I won't. I'll honor your request. Harry Mavromikalis. Did I get very that? Very good. Yeah? Very good. I love the Greek. Very Greek. Yeah, okay. very wow. Greek. Wow. Very okay, good. Okay, great. So instead of Shartov, it could be Shartros or Shavros or something like that, my last you name. You know what it Shartoff. means, don't you? His name means Black Michael. <laughs> Mavro means Black Michalis means oh great yeah. Michael. Michael right yeah. yeah as as it implies and then uh, Olympia Dukakis what an honor thank you for thank you for agreeing <laughs> so to speak to do this appreciate it my pleasure my pleasure I walked into her home and um, surprised her I don't think you <laughs> that's a first I didn't know you were coming I'm sorry yeah that's what when no, I I, I should be apologizing no. yes you should be <laughs> I'm sorry maybe they, when I, but I, when I saw your son I thought oh my look God Luke is here. And I thought, is Stefan here? I, it, 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 it's That's my your son. son and my grandson. Well, it, it's Father's Day, so that would have been a nice way yeah, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, welcome, and thank you again. And uh, so, Harry, this is your first... You're making a first feature documentary. And yes. It's, and it's about, it's coincidentally, about Olympia Dukakis. That's right. So I want to know... This is your first feature documentary, right? As, your uh, yes, as a, as a director? On yes, or I'm filmmaker. working on two feature-length documentaries at the same time. Uh, and this is one of them. <laughs> and I'm raising, trying to raise money for both. <laughs> I what said I, would, I was not going to raise any money. I'm now raising money. What was it, what's the other one? What's the other one about? Um, then we'll get to the. Do you want to talk to them no, about the No, no, you talk about it. Is it's there a Greek uh, theme to it or no, Greek American it's theme? No, it's a it's a gay couple in Dallas, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they've. Um, and how the financial crisis has affected them. They're both artists, both really talented. They lost everything in 2009, their home and their businesses. And I've come in to, when they're trying to rebuild their lives, they've, you know, they've gone on the deep end mm -hmm. with alcohol abuse and you know, yeah. prescription okay. drug abuse. And now they're trying to Things. Pull it all back Pull, yeah. together. It's a very funny, actually. Is it? No, it doesn't sound funny, <laughs> but it is funny, and it's quite moving. You uh, know. So, okay, and that's your shooting. Where you said? Dallas. In Dallas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, have you seen Love Is Strange yet? This um, Iris Sachs's film. It touches. No, no, yeah. It's a fiction film, he's of course. A, he's an NYU teacher, professor. Ira. Ah. Ira Sachs. Uh, he did. Um, Ira? Ira, Ira Sachs. No, that guy, but that one. He's a director. He's a gay director, and he did the. What was the previous movie? Oh, the key, keep the lights on. Keep the lights on. Yeah. Did you see Keep the Lights On? It. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, the new one is. I'm not going to spend much more time on it, but the new one stars uh, John Lithgow and um, uh, Alfred Alfred Molinas, and oh, yeah. as a gay couple, who uh, lose their home because of the 
financial oh, crisis. It's similar. It was their home. That's about where they and the, yeah, so they're split up and they have to temporarily live with family, you know, and it's they it's 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 all about that, you know, in this period of time, but oh, it's very moving, very yeah. moving. But also a lot of fun. It I mean, must bring back old issues. I'm sure yeah. old problems come roaring back. Yeah. With that kind of s structure. Um, well how does it feel Olympia to have? Uh, I mean, it can't be comfortable, or does it get more comfortable? You know, you're right. When there are many times where it's uncomfortable doing this documentary. Yeah. And there are times when it's a lot of fun. Right. So. Yeah. See how he hogged it. That's, that's what He moved it over like that. And I. I I should give you both the mics and just say, do hands, you know, <laughs> like sign language too. Um, so, but uh, how long have you been? Uh, now we're going to ask him a question Couple stupidly. How many but years? How, is how it? long three have you years. been? You've been working on this for three, three years. Three years. Is there? Is there? So, so, I, but you must have. Uh, it's over a thousand days. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, but it's not all the time. Obviously, he's in Dallas working. It's what? Part. He's a, oh, it's not all the time. It sounds like it's stop and go to some degree. Like yeah, that, yeah, that right. When it's an important period or where you feel like. I don't think I would have been alive yeah. if it was three years every day. <laughs> no, he wouldn't have been. <laughs> you can guarantee that. <laughs> there would have been someone who have, would have uh, damaged his legs or something. <laughs> <laughs> well I don't know who, but somebody would have done something. Well, your physical proximity suggests that things are not too bad. You're not, uh, although they haven't spoken directly to each other. Maybe the, there is that problem, but no, they seem to get along very well. You yeah, too. Well, we, we get along pretty good, yeah. Yeah. It's what do it was the, uh, and so anyway, tell me, but to a finish the, I did ask. Sometimes I love him more than I like him. Got but it. Uh, like that, you yeah. know. Is it, is, but uh, it, you're so used to being on camera. Um, that I wonder, this is such a different experience too. Exactly. Is this, does this, was this, did this take a different set of muscles or a different set of energy for you to kind of get? It does. I'm constantly aware that I'm def protecting myself or defending myself. I can hear it in my voice. I can feel it in my body. I keep trying to stop doing that, I mean, you know. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I, I never do that when I act and here I am. You know, but I mean, I'm talking about my mother, my father. I'm talking about being Greek. I'm talking about not just my work. I'm talking about political things. Um, some of them are not terribly popular and mm -hmm. blah, blah, and blah, blah, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what was the, um, I mean, obviously, how you share, are you an actor as well? Do you come from an acting background? My, uh, Harry? Oh, did he's you an actor. He's a, he's a Greek. They're all born actors. Um, they're terrifying, actually. They're all. <laughs> Uh, so, but you, maybe you saw you were forced to watch Zorba and what, as a child. Yes, I mean I'm not an actor. I'm, I I was a dancer. Okay. Choreographer. Yeah. Choreographer. He had his own company. And then I switched to film. I went to NYU, got my master's in film directing, mm -hmm. and been doing that ever since. Okay. So and then w obviously you share. Did you want to say something? Do what? Oh, I thought you wanted to add something. No, no. Okay. The um, uh, and so. Obviously, there's the, the Greek-American um, connection you share with Olympia, but I was wondering if there was a, what, what's, what about her? There's a l other Greeks that you could have made a documentary about, after all. Well, yeah. <laughs> I can give her mine, so there's no way the, the, she's the, not the, interrupted. There's a lot he has to have the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the microphone. The mic yeah. <laughs> there's doesn't understand sharing. There's definitely a lot of other Greek Americans out there, um, but I had the good fortune of uh, meeting her and um, fell in love with her. I, yeah. in, she was supposed to teach at NYU a class, and I really wanted to take that class. And uh, I, you know, you it's first come first served with registration. It's at 7 a.m. I was up at 6 a.m. I was rehearsing on the computer how to register for her class to make sure that I got in. And at 6.58, I'm not kidding you, my internet broke. My, it went out. And uh, so I didn't get to take the class to register. You know, like uh, other people filled Sure. They got filled up real fast. And I went running to my, the head of my department uh, crying. I was like, I have to take this class. You don't understand. I have to take this class. And he's like, I'm sorry, Harry. I can't do anything for you. Like, this is the system. I'm like, put me on a waiting list. I don't care. Like, I'll, I'll hurt someone and they'll get out of the class and I'll go in. And 
And uh, he's like, okay, I'll put you on the waiting list. And eventually I got in. Well, a day before we started, it was announced that the class was canceled and Olympia was not going to teach that semester anymore. And I was devastated after all this, you know. Yeah. This is the Greek film. Drama. This is a film in of itself. It's they a Chris exactly. They, they didn't want me back. I caused so many problems. Oh really? I don't believe that. Oh yeah. Oh, is that true? You don't believe she could cause trouble? Well, <laughs> to the degree. Yep. I, yep. I mean, yep. I'm being I'm being nice about it. I suppose. I guess yeah. so. Sure. I don't know you that well, or at all, for that matter. But <laughs> so I decided that I really wanted to take um, uh -huh. class with her, and I told the head of the department. I said. I, I want to invite her to come to Cyprus, where I'm from, to teach a workshop for actors and directors. And he said, well, send me an email and I'll forward it to her. And a couple of days later, I get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Hi, Harry, this is Olympia. <laughs> it sounds more like <laughs> your he husband. Characterizes me. Yeah, that he's sounded more like your husband than. He's, a, he's like, really? <laughs> he's like, uh. Uh -huh. So did you do the uh, class in Cyprus? I did. You did. I, I went to um, I went to Athens and did uh, Rose, uh, one woman show that I did at the National that that um, and they had a festival that summer and I went and did that, and then uh, at the end of that I went to Cyprus and did the workshop. Did well, mm -hmm. t tell him that you thought I was bullshitting that this was never going to happen. Oh yeah, no, I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought, how's this going to happen? How's yeah. I mean, I, I thought to myself, how many filmmakers are there on Cyprus? Two? Yeah. I mean, I didn't really think there would be that many people that would be interested. And as it turned out, it was a really healthy group of people. Yeah, 35. Wow. They were all filmmakers or burgeoning? Well, some of them. They German weren't all directors. Uh, I got you. I, yeah, think yeah. Was, I think it was about 10 or 12 directors, and then the rest were actors. Because right. the workshop was for act Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. He goes to a school that doesn't even allow this type of stuff, so Walter. he's on, now he finished, yes. So he's just finished school Thursday. So now he's and on it. And I, well, I, I mean, it's hard to expect that he's gonna, you know, he puts up with this thing that I do and, yeah. you know, and he's, he, he would just sit there if he didn't have the phone, but he's, he's doing some research. You, you can't hear this, can you, this click, click? No, okay. no, no. Oh, click, click. Oh, uh, oh, that, yeah. Um, well, uh, oh, you know, I was going to say, uh, I was uh, tasked to, to watch, uh, one another, another thing I do is I screen films for a couple of different festivals lo locally, like there's w Tribeca is one, but, but Rooftop Films is another, and uh, they gave me, they mostly play American independent films, Rooftop Films, they do all these outdoor, hip, yeah, hipster. I've, I've been to one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's the summer series uh, based in Brooklyn, but they do some events all over the city, outdoors, mm. on rooftops, and, you know, all these interesting locations. But I, so I screened the films. But they get most of their films from Sundance and South by Southwest and, you know. Well, this year I watched a bunch of films, and they gave me ones they knew weren't going to get in because they were just, they, they were like six Greek films. I'm, not, I'm talking about Greek films. And I was like, well, why are they giving me that? They're not going to, I doubt they're going to select Greek films. I mean, they made once in a while. And uh, I started watching. Every one was the better than the one after. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And I wish I'd had time since last night when I was emailing with Anthula oh, about I doing this. I would love this. to see I'm them. I'm going to get that list to you. They're beautiful films. I mean, Full-length really films. Full-length feature films shot in Greece, which by Greek directors, and they are all so wonderful. Um, yeah, it was just like, Isn't this is a great... I'm so now glad. With I mean, all the difficulties that they're having... You would think there would be no money. I don't know that it takes much money, but nowadays, because I think yeah. you know they're getting the same inexpensive digital cameras that we we're, we're getting, and you know they're shooting outdoors and in uh, little villages, and uh, they it uh, they're just oh yeah that's that that might be. It's a, he's probably got only one dish or two. I forgot about that. Um, anyway, anyway, I have all, you all to myself. So what? <laughs> I have you all to myself. <laughs> When he comes back. Now tell me the real truth. No, uh, so you, uh, but we can go back to, I'll get you that list of Greek films because okay, they're, yeah, they're marvelous. Well, you know, I mean, uh, in, uh, films are, of course, I watch films from all over the world. Oh my God, I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. But it's, Greek is right now, I think, in a, uh, you know, on a roll. I think they really are, there's Did a number. Did you know this? I, th I think any time a country goes through such a yeah. big crisis, 
the artistic side of it comes up, you know, and you get better theater, you get better cinema, you know, better books. And also you get more of it. Yeah. That yeah. it seems like there are more people wanting to speak up and to, to talk and yeah. reveal and be part of the dialogue. And yeah. There's a cathartic kind of um, not only creating it, but obviously s seeing it, w yeah. you know, and that. But I think it's more about people, like Olympia said, it's about people wanting to speak up because yeah, right. their voices have been shut down by the government. Yeah. And this is the only way they can express themselves. That's when I become really moved when I see them, the protesters, or when I see them really arguing about things. I mean, I become, you know, really trying to solve this problem, really trying to, there are so many reforms that need to happen, and uh, people, are, but the, the latest thing is that the courts said that it was illegal for the government to fire 400 Cleaning, uh, 400 people got fired from yeah. civil service jobs. And the court said that it was illegal. They couldn't do it. Now, I mean, really. But the, the question is, what I, then what, do they what's do? What's going to happen exactly. now? Yeah, right. Yeah. European court, probably. You sue them in no, I think it was a Greek court. No, yeah. But if, the next level? If, if the government doesn't comply, then the people have to go to the European court. Oh, okay. And sue the government, like you know, to the government for not com Yeah. Well, uh, well I uh, you're exactly right, though, about um, what's going on in terms of ma uh, why there's so much good film coming out. But, uh, you know, there's probably other uh, things as well. I mean, maybe it's just, I think right now there is a, uh, you know, the world cinema, w there's like little bubbles will po start, you know, coming, s resurfacing in different parts <laughs> of the world. And I think right now Greek is, 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 is it, great. you know? That's great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but, uh, so is there, s uh, going back to Olympia Dukakis, undefined, are you defining her in this or is she becoming, is she, bec is there a clarity I coming through that about that's who? That's not the title. Oh, okay. Undefined? Is that what the title is? Well, that's what it's been like, yeah. Working so title. It's a working, working title. Now it's a working title. Yeah. As of this moment. No, no, <laughs> no I don't. I didn't realize that he had decided. I thought that he no, decided no, we, on that. No, no, it's a working title. It's definitely a working title that might stick. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but no, my God, are you kidding? Defining her? <laughs> <laughs> she, I was telling her the other day, I said, you know, like, you've spent all your life going against definitions, what other people define, whether it was, you know, what to what it is to be a woman, what it is to be an actress, like, you know, she was an ethnic actress. What it is right. to be a Greek, a Greek American. Right. A Greek yeah, and a Greek all American. That. Yeah. Um, you know, when she was casted in all like ethnic parts, she's like, fuck that and I'm going to go and start my own theater company so I can do the parts that I really feel I can do. Mm -hmm. What were some of those types of parts you're referring to? Were oh, you thinking of Shakespeare? Were you thinking of uh, all the Mer uh, great I Greek? I to play the great parts. Some That's of those are of Greek. The turns Greeks. Out. I wanted to do yeah. Moliere. I wanted to sure. check up. I wanted to do Shakespeare. I wanted to do Racine, Corneille, Goldoni. I mean, I wanted to play the great parts. I wanted to do Miller and Williams and O'Neill and I mean I I, don't even, I didn't even know there were that many playwrights. I'll tell you right now. I guess <laughs> that comes three. as a complete and utter shock. Three. <laughs> a Greek, Shakespeare, and uh, maybe and, and Beckett. Yeah. <laughs> Beckett. And I've done Beckett. I've done uh, yeah. Wow. I, I did Happy Days. Yeah. And there was an uh, was there the, it was obviously I'm going to guess was the same issue with with your film career. Even though I think you hit. Well, the film career started off with my playing in Italian. I mean. Uh, you know, in the eighties, and uh, so um, although I people Italians come up to me, oh, you're like my aunt, you're like my mother, and, and the Jewish people. I mean, I actually, the same. yeah, Jews. They say, I mean, I actually was. Uh, if I did anyone, I was doing my mother and her sister, my aunt Catherine. They were, then. <laughs> but. Um, no, that was, uh, that took, oh, how old was I? 57. But you, I and know, and you would have been 10 when you had chair or yeah. something like that. I'm sorry. That's not, but I, know I was lucky because right after that I got um, Steel Magnolias. Um, unbelievable, yeah. Let me, let me just say this, that if it hadn't been, and this is my opinion, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, 
But if it hadn't been for her theater company and her theater work, because what most people don't understand is that she's been working before the Oscar so much oh, sure. in theater, and she gained respect among the theater people in enough respect that someone could notice her and offer her the part without an audition, right? Moonstrike? Well, he came well Norman Jewison, I was Tim doing Norman? Social Security mm -hmm. on Broadway, and he came to see Ron Silver. He was thinking of him, actually, for the lead. Uh, and um, and then he saw me, and uh, and I was playing an 80-year-old Jewish woman. I came on with a little walker, and I was like, you know. Shawl. I played Marlo Thomas's um, mother, and I mean, I think she's like about five years younger than I am or something. Excuse me. So, um, and then he came back the second night and uh, saw me, and then I got a call from my agent, said that he was interested, and then I got, I never auditioned, and he just came to my dressing room, leaned against the wall, and talked to me, and watched me, and, and then um, I called up, and they said, do you have the part now? But I can't tell you, everybody wanted that part, uh, on both coasts. And, um, I mean, I heard Lauren Bacall wanted it at one point, I mean, sure. you know, it's, yeah. it was like a, so for me, I, I, and I, at the time I was running the theater and I had three children, and I had vowed that I was not going to leave town when I had kids. I said, that's it. That was the thing I was going to do. I wasn't going to leave because, you know, you, as an actor, you leave town a lot. So um, I decided that I was going to. I'd waited a while to have kids. I was in my 30s. So um, I said I wasn't going, and so it just turned out that that was the year that my youngest son, you know, went away to college. In uh, 80, I guess 86 you know, so or so. I thought, okay, I'm, no, there was nobody at home. The empty nest. Everybody was gone, yeah. Yeah. So I just, I said, I'm going. I'm, I'm, and we went, we shot in New York. That wasn't it, because I did a lot of stuff in New York. But uh, we went to Canada. We were in Toronto. Oh, we shot uh, Moonstruck was uh, most yeah, of it, except for some exteriors in Brooklyn the Heights. The indoor stuff was and, in Toronto. And, and then the rest in the Brooklyn. And the outdoor stuff was all here. All locally in Brooklyn. Right. Yeah, I went through that neighborhood, yet, uh, well, th sort of through it yesterday uh, with, with him. And uh, just it occurred to me yesterday. This is before, by the way, I knew I was even going to be here today. You're kidding. That I went through that. Well, it's not unusual that I would go through Brooklyn, like by Brooklyn Heights. I do uh, very regularly. Right, right, right. But I thought to myself, first, there was some tourists behind me going also on the bus. It was just a city bus going to the Brooklyn Bridge Park. It's all developed now, beautiful, with lots of things for kids to do along the water. There yeah, in, yeah, know, sure. It was n not the case back in the 80s when they shot that movie. But, um, and, it was, and I was thinking, you know, I may, should I mention to them that this is where Moonstruck was shot? And <laughs> little did I know it would be sitting the next day. It's a and very here weird we thing. Here we are, Moonstruck. That's very strange. But yet, you know. Serendipitous is a good word for it. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, it, it was meant to happen. Uh, but uh, but you said so after that though. It, it of course it opened the door. It was a huge success. And right out of well, the gate, you got, got an Oscar. I That's an unusual. But, but the advantage was, and then yeah. after that, I did look who's talking one, two, and three. Then still, like no. Were you do like John Travolta's mother? I forget who yeah, your role was. I. I she was the voice of the baby. Oh, that's I what it was. Yes, of course. No, no, <laughs> no. I played uh, <laughs> the voice of the baby. I played. Uh, What's her name? Allie, Chris, Allie, uh, Allie, Christy Alley. Christy, Christy, Christy Alley. I think I Christy her Alley. Oh, okay, her mother. I think that was it. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll figure that out. But yeah, so but a lot then of. And then after that was Tales of the City. I mean, there that, were that's very a different thing. parts. What a great, oh. what a great uh, I, series that was. I'm actually relating back to what, um, what's her name? Harry. <laughs> what Harry said was that I had all this experience in the theater. So. My acting, what I enjoyed the most was transformation, you know, where you could oh, yeah. become a different kid. And, and that's what it was between Moonstruck and Look Who's Talking and Steel Magnolias and Tales of the City. I mean, they were four very different characters. And that was all because of my theater work. I mean, both the years of, of that. You know, so that... Uh, um I was thinking maybe Moonstruck, they, they just were, Jerome Jewison was, was interested in casting New York, local New York actors for some of these parts, but it's, you know, just because of, uh, there are a number of the other actors that were in there, he used, you know, uh, it seemed like he was casting some well-known established character and theater actors 
in other roles in that movie. But yeah. But it, um, um, and then Tales of the City. Oh, that's right. It's another one I was thinking of recently, um, because maybe Pride Month and uh, it's been what? on my mind. Pr- well, it's June is like Pride, Pride Month, Gay Pride, Gay Pride Month, and uh huh. Yeah. So and I was thinking about that, and uh, the great Donald Moffat is one of my favorite actors, and you know what a great time, Donald Moffat. He lived in the neighborhood too, right? In, I'm, so I'm not going to. Donald Moffat. Donald Moffat. Oh yeah, he was great. And that was great working with him. Yeah. Yeah, I think he. There he were a I bunch of people in it that were. Campbell was in it. Scott Campbell Scott. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chloe Webb, and Laura Linney. And um, oh, that wonderful Canadian actress who played the mother. She's just recently passed away. Mm. See, that's just where my age comes. Your catches sh- up with me. The well, names, the names that's not don't age. stick the way that's they used to. Maybe, but every you know, you're doing pretty well. Your your I average is is a, excellent. For a 69 year old, <laughs> you're fine. You're doing fine. Well, you're not shy about that, but we don't. You know, I'm that's wonderful. 65. He likes to add oh. to my. Age. <laughs> um, so with so much, um, so much uh, amazing uh, material and so much great. I mean. Uh, to uh, t- what a trove of experiences from theater, film, po- po- uh, your p- work, uh, your political uh, work, and um, you have a uh, um, someone in the family who ran for president once, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, who actually spoke at uh, not long ago at my the temple I used to belong to up up here a, a few blocks up. He and he and. I, I guess spoke Kitty. at a temple of no, you're no, Michael, Michael Dukakis. Michael. Oh, Michael, Michael, Michael here Michael. in New York? Yeah, it was a while ago though. Mm-hmm. It's oh, a, like a like a year or two ago, a couple of years ago, yeah. and uh, so I was gonna. Go, I didn't get over there. I admit it, but I, I was like burning to. But mm-hmm. you know, but, uh, Michael is part of the documentary. Too. Yeah, you, you. Why don't you talk about not only Michael Dukakis is in it? Name some of the other like Dukakai. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call 1988, the year of the Dukakai. <laughs> That's right. It was pretty Did amazing. Did you get my cousin Strat? Yes. Oh, you got him yeah. good. You got Strat? Stratus Dukakis. Is Strat Patty's husband? No. No, that's no that was Arthur. Okay, I'm changing yeah, my I name legally to Stratus Strat was Dukakis. his brother. Arthur yeah. and Strat are brothers. Well, can I tell you a funny story? Please. I, I would love a funny story. It's sure. a funny, sad story. Um, a funny, sad story. Yes. Well, Let's it's hear. about your house. Uh, when I went to... Olympia was uh, doing uh, a Shakespeare play in mm-hmm. Lenox, Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. So I went there to film her, and I took the opportunity to go to Boston and Lowell and, you know, Boston area, let's say, to film all her family, cousins, nephews, nieces. And Did you get the house in Lowell? <laughs> oh. You're learning a lot. So I'm we glad we're doing this because you're learning a lot about your <laughs> documentary yeah, yeah. that's so, about so you. So we go <laughs> to the... Um, to Lowell, and I said, can you show me where she grew up? And they take me to the house, and I come out of the car, and I'm filming the house, and this guy comes up to me and says, uh, oh, are you interested to buy the haunted house? And I said, what haunted house? He goes, the one that you're filming. And I said, it's not a haunted house. He goes, I said, a friend of mine lived there. And he said, well, everyone who ever lived there had something horrible happen to them. And I said, well, that's kind of funny and fun, but my friend lived there and nothing ever, ha- nothing bad ever oh happened yeah. to her. So I come, I go back to Lennox after this meeting and I say, Olympia, this and this happened. Like we went and filmed your, uh, your house and he said that everybody who's lived there, something horrible has happened. Mm-hmm. She turned white. I'll give the microphone yeah, to yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because what happened was that my mother's family lived there. They came over, you know, d- their first thing was to do push carts, and they worked very hard, es- especially the, b- well, everybody did, but the brothers were very clever, and um, they managed to get stores and finally apartment buildings, and I mean, they were like, and then one of the, there were five girls and two m- brothers, and one of the girls was getting, had an engagement party and they all got into the car and they were gonna drive to Nashua for hot dogs. It was something that they did. And I can't believe how many people were in this car. Uh-oh. And uh, my mother was in the front and um, her two brothers, two of her sisters, uh, two um, 
brothers-in-law, one future and one already, and another sister. And they were, had been drinking at the party and making noise, and the brother who was driving the car wanted them to quiet down. And he kind of swerved the car to scare them, and they slid right off of a railroad bridge, landed head down onto the tracks. And that night, that m my mother lost two brothers, two sisters, uh, one sister-in-law, and two brother-in-laws. And her other sister was badly hurt, and nothing happened to my mother. Nothing. So there, were, there was a funeral of seven people. Yeah. Which there's photographs with the seven coffins, and it was unbelievable. You lost uh, your. It totally your uh, knocked my my mother's life. I think she was a different person after oh, that. Oh well, of course, I wouldn't be. Yeah. And her father. Uh, her mother had a stroke, and her father became instantly senile. I don't know what that is or why that happened, but I mean the whole family was well, like devastated. It's that would dis I could see that. I mean, it, uh, I can't imagine family not being destroyed by that. Yeah. It's a, it's like a personal holocaust. I mean, it really is. What's the? Uh, wow, no wonder you turned white. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. And they had they had children. Uh, these they were still young, what? youngish. Your, your 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 these aunts and uncles or these these would have been your aunts. Yes, and uncles. one of them had two children, okay. and and her. Her husband's family took them uh, because it did, I don't know if this is true, but they said that the children belonged to the father. Uh, I don't know if that's a Greek thing or that was what those people did or said or mm -hmm. whatever, but they got the children it's just as well because my grandparents couldn't have taken care of them mm. at all. Mm. And, uh, there were only two sisters left who were okay. The other one uh, lost her husband, and she was widowed w with two kids. But um, she was alive, so she was able to take care of them. The other sister who died, she, the fam that those children were raised by um, her husband's family. It's an incredible but story. But enough. Well, yeah, enough, so enough. I'm enough sorry, I didn't. Tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, but it's it's life has uh, uh, unfortunately gives us that yep. and, uh, that not oh, so quite so frequently in that drastic a, uh, yeah. a level. But so they said it was the house. Yeah. Wow, if you need to find that guy uh, again, um, I think the house has a reputation. It's like the haunted house. That's what they say. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's haunted by those people that have. Um, so uh, we were going to, uh, I was going to ask you also, like who else was, uh, we have a number of Dukakai as we've established <laughs> in the, uh, uh, thank goodness there are still plenty of, of them, I hope, uh, 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 who are, are alive and well and, and in the movie, oh, yeah. in the documentary. And then uh, there, uh, you mentioned also that, uh, I think you, s who else did you say was in, I'm sure many of your peers and colleagues in the theater world, I'm sure, want to... Well, we've, we're basically interviewing everyone, as that many people as we fun. can, in the sense we have the colleagues like uh, Lynn Cohen, who was in um, The Hunger <laughs> Games and Sex and the City, Whoopi Goldberg, um, Ed Asner. Oh, yes, I saw who, him in the promotional Who was game. great. Uh, Melina Kanakaridis from CSI. Uh, we're trying to get Zach Kalifianakis and... Uh, Is Asner a Greek? By the way, no. Okay, because no. I didn't know maybe his it was a, his name changed. Ed Asner. Ed Asner. I thought maybe he changed his name early on or something. No, he's not Greek, but he's know. made it very clear that he wants to get in her pants. Mm. <laughs> well, he's not an idiot. You know? <laughs> this is a man who's made a very <laughs> lot of good decisions, and who's to question? <laughs> um, we've interviewed her doctor, her what? Yoga instructor, her physical therapist, her right. friends. And her then you just figure out what all works. All my children. All her, her children, cousins. Yeah, uh, the the director of the public theater. Um, just understand, right? Karen of course. Perloff? Yeah, of oh, course. Okay. Everybody. I but speaking of all my children, you use that phrase, but you started off in the soaps, didn't you? Like in terms of your doing TV. You did a bunch of well, soaps, uh, right, early on? A, when my husband, uh, Louis, had an accident, and, um, and uh, I, 
I couldn't believe it. I'd never been able to get a soap. And then I got this soap. It was so great because you could stay here. we really, oh, my God, we really needed the money. All right. So, um, yeah, that and that lasted for about, I don't think, was it six months even? Oh, okay. And, it's a, um, I, it looked like you did a bunch of different stuff. They tried soaps. to fire me early on because they said the audiences didn't like me. And I said to her, well, I, this is the kind of character I'm playing. I said, let me change my character. Let me change the clothing and would do it. And so, I, and so they stopped getting complaints about me. And, but then just they fired your image. the producer. <laughs> the one person who hired me, uh, she, she got fired. It was just so happens that we would have been interrupted anyway by the uh, the out drag race. Out your ass is the what I say. The right out your ass. <laughs> the drag race that's going on on Broadway outside. There's no way to charge it right now. There's no way to charge it right now. So you have to wait. No, no, we're not going to do that right now, honey. We're, we're going to wind down shortly. I want to let respect uh, you guys and your, your, your schedule today. Yeah, but, uh, that's good. I'm getting weary. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, we'll do, but I'm uh, appreciative at the same time. So okay, good. Well, we're gonna let people, a lot of people, know about the, that that you're doing this Kickstarter, right? And what do you, th uh, you know, this is where we go to. We ask the the public, uh, you know, what's nice about uh, not only do you get the money, hopefully, to make finish the film or meet the costs in your budget, but you also build a community of people out there way before the movie comes out on theaters or on TV, wherever it's yeah. going to play. So you kind of already have all these ambassadors right, right. that are out there rooting right. for you and who have a stake in the movie. So well, it's a very powerful tool. That, that, was, that was on purpose. Like we chose to do Kickstarter because we could, we have investors that we're talking to and I think we could get money from that, but we felt, the producers and I felt that it's important to create a fund base uh, before the movie comes out, so when it comes out, people are expecting it, they're waiting right. for it. Um, we've been doing a lot of media outreach, both here in Greece and Cyprus. There's a lot of articles that already come out. Also, in, we had a, an article in Los Angeles. <laughs> at yeah. The, yeah, the Examiner, I think. Great. Um, it's great, though. But we've Good raised, price. we've we've asked for a hundred thousand dollars, and we've managed to raise sixty-two thousand so far, and we have a week. Well, there's usually that surge, as we all know, <laughs> the phenomenon of that surge. It's they think they call it the Dukakis surge yeah. now, and uh, they're going to call it that this this time around anyway. Okay, there's going to be a surge. Yeah, yeah. Get you're going to make that hundred grand. <laughs> You'll make the hundred grand. Don't worry. Yeah, about and and people can go online and give. Twenty dollars, fifty dollars, sure. whatever they can. And I'm sure the little gifts and stuff, right? R yeah. For for for, you know, contributing. And the way to find us is by going to Kickstarter.com and then just go, uh, you know, search for Olympia Dukakis Undefined, and then <laughs> our project will come up. What do you think of a kickstarting Kickstarter I, uh, campaign? What do you think, think of it's that? It's great. I just, uh, I mean, it's nice to know that there are so many people who think this is worth something and want to see it happen and look forward to it. That's, you know, mm -hmm. just, I don't think we're going to disappoint them, but. Um, Tell them about when, because you, you really didn't want me to film you for no, two I years, but then I showed you the trailer. I want, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were doing all this stuff and I like really want to keep saying, why did I agree to this? Why did I agree to this? And uh, and then he showed me the trailer and it was really well done, and I and not that uh, plus the fact that he promised me that if I didn't like something it wouldn't be in, so those two things and and as I say although I've um, I've learned that there are many things about Harry I don't like I've gotten to love him so that's what can I do washes away. <laughs> the dislike parts there. Um, I have a last question. I have a last question though. That okay. just because you do you do a, a, a certain number of independent films. Yeah, I do. Certainly independent spirited films. Right. And I'm wondering because uh, um, you know uh, Kickstarter is really um, you know it's kind of become this really popular tool for for the reasons we just right, talked right. about. Not just ra making money, but creating a community for your mm -hmm. film. Um, if if you uh, just had any um, if, if this is something that you've ever thought about or, or if you have, uh, you know, what, why, why, or maybe even better question is why, where do, what do you get out of uh, in doing independent films? 
Well, all independent films. Uh, first of all, well, you, you may sh- never see a dime, right? I mean, well, I'm talking about no. Well, I mean, would well, you get some money from independent films? It's not. But they want you. But um, like the last one I did, which was called uh, Seven Chinese Brothers. I mean, that was Bob uh, I did with Bob Jason. Byington. What? And Bob Byington is the director. Yes. I know Bob. You know him? Yes. Oh, I had a great time. Uh, it was Jason Schwartzman, who I've worked with on um, Bored to Death, mm-hmm. and um, I really, I his. It's it's the uh, the collaborative spirit that is there, uh, that um, the improvisation that is permitted, that the exploration that he did. I mean, I mean, we would do ten takes, and I wasn't even aware the ten takes had gone by, because we would say, "Oh, well, Lord, when this time, I want to do that again because of this." I mean, we were constantly. Uh, we became so. I became so. Well, so did Jason. But he was already actually so invested in the film and the spirit of the film and the story. I mean, I really began to like the story. So. And 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 that's what well, that's an appeal for you. Like these oh, these kind of yes. things happen. They rarely happen yeah. on a big budget studio type yeah. film when you get. Where it's, it's not so big, you know when. <laughs> She's more effective. <laughs> you make too much noise. You can sit on that chair. Is that okay? Oh, he's got Sorry, great, honey. He's got great eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. It's okay. Yeah. I'm just recording. That's all, We're honey. We're sorry. We're sorry. <laughs> I can't have any kids in here being sad. You can't get angry. No, no sadness for kids in this apartment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's, they make them so cute, it's hard to stay oh. like annoyed at them. I, oh, I just feel like... they're so sensitive. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we had a friend here yesterday. Um, 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 actually, is a friend of one of my sons, and they came, there was the, a game, the Greeks against the Colombians, of course. And uh, so his friend is Greek, and um, married to, uh, I don't know, an Italian, I think, or something. At any rate... His son was here. This son is the same age as his daughter. They'd never met. This little boy was crying at the end. He did not want to leave his friend. I, th- I think he fell in love. I think that little boy fell in love with my granddaughter. It was so incredible. Mm. He was like, he had been jumping, because she's very active, jumping around. He was sweating. I thought, this guy is fucking sweating. <laughs> He's like five years old, and this, he's sweating with this girl. Like, it was so sweet, so sweet. It's really amazing to see you, um, how you are with kids, because I think you're probably like a very different grandmother than you were a mother. Oh, of course. I mean, you have to be. I mean, one, one of my sons he has two daughters, Peter, and he, he was saying to me, Listen, you can't do this," he said. "They think that they'll think that affluence is a part of life. It isn't. It's not real." Blah mm-hmm. blah 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 blah. And I said to him, "Look, at, I was where you were. Mm-hmm. You have to teach them that. I get to spoil them. I get to do nothing but love them. I don't have to do anything. You're the one that has to walk out the door with them, and I absolutely would not change. I feel I'm going to buy them whatever Your I want to buy say them." Yes. What? And your job is to say yes. I'm sorry? Your job is to say yes. Yes, that is my job. My job is to say yes. And, his, yeah. and, and to look and see, well, what do they want? What do they need? I don't have to. I don't have to. He doesn't have to learn manners. I just get him a chocolate on a stick. <laughs> and that makes him <laughs> feel better. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, thank you both. And, oh, uh, no, thank, well, you. thank you. And I appreciate your, 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 your making the time and... Um, well, thank you for yeah, yeah. coming here. We'll come and we'll talk again when the movie and is. Thanks to Anthula too. Very much. Thank you, Anthula. And um, we'll, we'll t- maybe we'll have another opportunity to talk when the movie when is uh, getting yeah, ready. Yeah, when it comes out or yeah. something, we'll right? Yeah, part, yeah. The sequel. We'll do our own sequel. Put him, put him on the list. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the list. We'll, we'll get better Jason words. Schwartz, Schwartz you're, to you're on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I hope okay. Uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, okay. <laughs>